So we'll move on now to our next speaker, uh, who is Dr. Uh, Sabine Tote Mayo, uh, who is also from the University of Nottingham. I think Brad spoke about her just now. And um, so she joined the School of Veterinary Medicine Science uh, at the University of Nottingham in 2006, just before the first vet students arrived and has been involved in facilitating professional skills and student well-being sessions from the very beginning. She is module uh, convener for the integrated module student well-being and mental health awareness. Thank you, Sabine. Uh, thank you. Okay, so this project is looking, we're interested not only um, to integrate mental health awareness teaching into the curriculum, but also then to um, evaluate uh, what impact that that has. And um, this was done in collaboration with two students, Tulia Emanuel did um, some of the analysis as part of her third year project. And Charlie Twyford is now in final year and she intercalated um, for a PG third and also did um, some of the work and in um, together with my um, colleague Georgina. So I think the slides are just responding quite slowly. And what I'm going to cover is um, talking a little bit about the barriers to accessing support and um, how, what we can try and do to, to encourage the students more, how we integrate it into the curriculum, um, what our session, how we delivered the session, how we um, evaluated it, and then a little bit around student perception of their knowledge and understanding. Um, can they then up, um, apply that to some short scenarios? And what did they find most useful from this session? Uh, what we were interested in is, is looking at barriers why students don't access some of the support. And there has been a recent study done in the US um, looking at loads of um, different vet schools and also um, a study uh, from, from uh, UK vet schools. And some of the important themes that are barriers to accessing any mental health um, related support is around um, stigma. Um, the services, uh, things to do with the services that are provided. Um, a lot of personal factors, but also a lot of veterinary medicine culture and identity um, as, as being important. Um, and um, one of the, the, stig the stigma that is, is a barrier also is, has two parts of it. There is an element of self stigma around that people are ashamed um, if they need help and can't just cope by themselves. But also there is a lot of public stigma which has to do with, uh, with the cultural and identities around how, how do um, other people, people they admire in the profession will look at them if they uh, require to access help. Now, Within the other barriers within the culture and identity as a, as a veterinarian is around presenteeism, so feeling you always have to be present, and if you're not there, then you are slacking. The kind of identity norms, the ethos of autonomy that you shouldn't need any help, and, and perfectionism. Um, within the services, there are issues around accessing it or being aware of what is actually available, but also attitudes and beliefs around if this is really helpful worries about confidentiality and uh, maybe not um, getting on with, with the providers. Around personal factors, there is then um, the biggest factor of all as a barrier is time or prioritizing uh, mental health. A lot of it is around that seeking help or engaging with any mental health awareness will take away from study time or, or revision time. Um, mental health literacy, so understanding um, what conditions are and when also it is useful to, to ask for support. Um, some students are unwell, so don't have some motivation to, to um, seek support and um, costs can, can be an important factor. So what can we try and do with, within our teaching? So what we really um, want to address is um, stigma and, and discuss aspects of that, making sure the students are aware of the services that, that are available. Um, understanding more about mental health conditions and also then having the motivation to, to engage uh, with those services. So Brad already outlined our curriculum, so I will not go over that again, but what um, we were looking into this um, session we developed for first years and um, what impact that had. 
So one of the important aspects or we thought long about is how can we make this session engaging? Um, actually, it just started off as have giving some workshops for, for VETSOC a few years ago. And a lot of the students who participated really thought that um, they had lots of friends who would really benefit from this knowledge, but they would never come to something um, if it's voluntary, if they're seen to, to choose to do that. Um, so, so we decided we put it compulsory with, within the curriculum. We um, co-created a lot of the material uh, with students across all year groups and still um, continue to do so. It is peer facilitated, so all the small group um, working where they do discussions have peers and rather than any members of staff um, to, to make it more friendly for them to discuss rather than feeling they might be overheard. We try to always make it very relevant, so we ask at the beginning what their greatest challenges are just now, but also what their positive experiences are and integrate that into the session. As I said, we have a big emphasis on discussing around stigma, but also to make them aware of all the support available within um, the vet school and the university. We develop games to make it more more engaging and um, Georgina Bladen, my colleague, will talk about that in, in the next session. Um, we use some video clips to explain anxiety and, and depression in, in this first session. And we go back to what they find challenging and, and ask them to discuss different aspects of that, how they would support a friend or, or a little vet, which is our buddy system. And um, while, it, while they were in isolation, we also asked for their top tips for um, thriving in isolation. So when we then looked at it, this study covers the first um, two uh, deliveries of that. So in that first delivery, uh, literally started a week after lockdown. And it was a rather rushed conversion from what was planned to be an in-person workshop to be delivered online. Um, and I think that first group probably had a slightly different experience than, than um, later groups when we run it a lot uh, more smoothly. And then the second cohort we delivered it to um, in October, November 2020, it was also delivered online. And again, that was at a time when the restrictions got tighter and the students were more confined um, and, and their social life very restricted. In each of those cohorts, we run it across six workshops with around 25 students in each. And at the end of each workshop, um, we delivered an online questionnaire and we had a return rate across both cohorts of 73%. Um, in that, we had some self-evaluation questions to, to ask students how they would um, judge their knowledge and understanding of different aspects of teaching uh, before and after. And um, we also asked them how they would um, support students in four different um, short scenarios. Uh, and uh, we then had an open questions, which um, we analyzed thematically. What did you might find most useful from this workshop? So, and um, because I have a limited amount of time, um, I'm focusing on the data from, from that second cohort. So the, the questions focused around stigma, stress, um, the support systems that were available and to look after their own well-being. And um, always the first um, bar is here before the teaching and the values um, after teaching. So with regard of their knowledge and understanding of stigma, um, they uh, perceived that that um, increased Similarly, um, their understanding of stress they perceive as increased, as well as how they would support um, someone else who is stressed. And then thankfully, they also find that um, their knowledge of the support system increased because we tried to put a lot of effort um, in engaging uh, the students with it and also their, their own um, well-being. And that was the same across um, both cohorts. Now, we also were interested in looking at this data in a slightly different way by looking at um, how many students rate their knowledge as high before and after um, teaching. So some students actually feel that they already come with quite a, quite a good knowledge, especially around stigma um, and stress. Uh, but um, we still found for all of those also increases um, after teaching. So more students um, or the number of students that rated their knowledge and understanding high, and um, we defined this as scoring themselves seven to 10 out of 10 um, increased. And as I say, um, especially also around the support offered by the vet school and the support offered by the university, less so um, external support. Uh, I think that probably has to do um, with 
uh, students might not find some of those support system relative um, or important at the time when we introduce them to it. But we are um, reintroducing all the support systems in all of our mental health awareness session across the, across the year groups. Now it is all self perception doesn't really necessarily translate and also um, acting on this, so we, we were interested in seeing um, what would the students suggest in four short scenarios, how they would support a peer or a friend or a flatmate. So we had a scenario around homesickness, around a friend that is suddenly more withdrawn and stays in their room, a friend that has concerns about placements, accessing it and financial aspects, and then also um, a, a flatmate that felt socially isolated and overwhelmed by workload. And um, Julia uh, developed a, a scoring scheme um, to, to evaluate um, those answers. And as expected with, with a um, homesick friend, um, the students offer support trying to integrate um, them more into, into activities and, and engage the students. Um, a withdrawn friend, uh, roughly half the students also um, suggest how to support the students and um, a bit more than in the green area here, actually signpost them towards some of the um, vet school and university support systems. Um, with placement, that was the most obvious. Um, play in placement, students seem to feel it most acceptable to uh, signpost towards uh, a support system. There is a placement office. And similarly, um, or differently again, in social isolation, most students um, are willing to, to support another friend and come, um, come up with good ideas, but are less likely um, to signpost support um, in, within the school. So they're, they're clearly happy to signpost when it is something like a placement system, but when it's more around welfare, um, it doesn't seem to be um, on the forefront um, of their mind. Now, we also wanted to know um, what they found most useful in these mental health awareness sessions. And um, there were a lot of comments around knowledge, so that they found out more about stigma that they found and stress, as well as mental health condition and the support system. Another really important aspect, especially during lockdown, was this um, opportunity to interact with other students and to, to discuss how to support each other, to work within a group, um, and to discuss coping strategies to what they found as challenges um, at the time, like the, the word clouds we generated at the beginning of the workshop. And also that what we had was um, relevant to their student life with regards to the scenarios, and also the reassurance that they're not the only one um, struggling with these kind of um, issues. Uh, a couple of examples with quotes, so cohort one, um, that was delivered straight after lockdown. And we had a few comments around that um, it was important for them to feel they were part of something the student highlighted, they hadn't seen or spoken to anyone except family in the last two weeks. And also the importance to acknowledge that during a pandemic, it's okay not to be on your A game right now with this whole global pandemic, and that it's okay if you have to reset as there is so much other stuff going on right now. This made me feel more relaxed about exams. The second cohort where the lockdown was not quite as, as strict anymore, but was tightening up again. Um, it was useful to work through different ways of supporting someone with problems and brainstorm ways to stay connected during restriction. And it reminded me of my own coping mechanisms and to take a step back and reevaluate. Not all students um, engaged with the mental health awareness workshops. Um, we had, especially around the beginning, there were some technical issues. Um, some students thought the sessions were too long. And um, there were comments around the dynamics of having online groups and teams and that interactions is not as, as good as if you are in person. Hopefully, when we next deliver it, we will deliver in person. So, so that should be less of an issue. But we also have students who don't really like to engage with mental health awareness. Some of them comment around um, that that takes time away from their revision, having a workshop like that. Some students also don't really want to engage with those subject matter because they, they find it stressful to be reminded of it. Um, but we hope that we can you know, help them to develop coping strategies rather than in avoiding any engagement. Some students feel they know it all already. And some students um, want 
think we have too much information about mental health conditions and some people wanted to have something like a mental health first aid course um, delivered within a couple of hours. So um, we try to, to manage expectation of um, students, but um, we don't get everybody to engage. So, so in summary, both cohorts reported improvements in all areas after the teaching sessions with the number of students that rated their knowledge and understanding high increasing. As I say, we're particularly pleased around the, the support available. Um, when asked to support a friend in a range of scenarios, they were generally supportive and, and had good ideas on how to support the students, but signposting um, was of support was far more likely around placement issues than, than around um, welfare issues. The feedback does suggest that all the themes we cover within the session were perceived as useful, at least by some students, and especially that they appreciated opportunities to discuss mental health strategies with their peers, realizing that they're not the only ones struggling and um, that the scenarios we had were um, relevant to their current life. Um, we have now delivered to four cohorts online, um, so, um, but we will deliver hopefully the next workshops in person. And we do found that co-creating the material with the students and having regular updates of scenarios, as well as peer facilitation is essential to keep those sessions um, relevant. And we could not have done it with all the students involved in creating the materials or involved in the peer facilitation. So the PG third interns we have, the teaching EMS students, some of the vet coaches and any other lovely volunteering students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabine, and that was really useful and, and interesting to hear about the support that was offered to um, your year one students, those both cohorts um, during the, the lockdown. And